So, a typical thoracic vertebra. And if you look at it from a lateral point of view, you can spot immediately this long, inferiorly sloping spinous process. I'm not sure exactly which one this is, but it's from, from the mid-region, so T5 to T9. So we've got a body. Oh, and if we turn it up this way, look at that. How's that for a perfect heart-shaped body? Well, nearly. So that's pretty good. Heart-shaped body, round vertebral foramen, classic uh, thoracic vertebra there. Here we've got, from a lateral point of view, uh, we've got a demi-facet here on the body and then another one here. So two demi-facets there on the body for articulation with the heads of the ribs. Now, just trying to get a better angle if we can see them, just with the light. Oh, well, it's not that great, but here, here's a demi-facet and then here is another one. Just have to take my word for it. It might be a bit visible there. There you go. There's one demi-facet just there. So, uh, but the one that is really amazingly clear on this one, look at that. That's the facet on the transverse process. And of course, that's going to articulate with the tubicle, the articular facet on the tubicle of the rib. So, uh, on typical thoracic vertebrae, you'll have those. So, two demi-facets on the body, one on the transverse process. So again, we've got a superior articular facet here on the, pro on the superior articular process, which is the whole thing. An inferior articular facet in here on the inferior articular process. Pedicle here. Oh, I think I forgot to mention the pedicle last time. Gee, I'm sorry. So a pedicle here, first part of the arch. And then the lamina, this flat bit here at the back, spinous process there. So that's typical thoracic vertebra. Let's have a look at a couple of atypical ones too. So here we've got just leave the typical one there. Here we've got T1. Now T1 um, doesn't quite have the classic heart-shaped body, nearly, but not quite. Um, it also has a spinous process that looks pretty similar, if I just move it over, to C7. So it can be difficult to tell apart from C7. Now hopefully though, you've, you'll have spotted the transverse foramen, and that makes it pretty easy. But they look pretty similar, apart from that. Um, and then given the fact that sometimes C7 doesn't have a transverse foramen, that can make it tricky. But the way you can tell, if you turn to have a look at a lateral point of view, we've got a tubicle here, uh, sorry, a facet here for the tubicle of the rib. And I think that one's pretty clearly visible there, which is nice. What you can see, though, and this one's pretty good, not sure about the light. This one's, oh, there we go. This one's pretty good. There's a facet there, a complete facet. There's a complete facet there for the, the head of the first rib. Now that's kind of a complete circle. And then there's a demi facet just here. So rather than having two demi facets like a typical thoracic vertebra would, this one's got a complete circular facet for the first rib and a demi-facet for the second rib. And that's pretty cool. So usually you can find them, if you look, if you, obviously if you are looking at T1, usually you can spot those, the full facet and then the demi-facet and you know you're looking at T1. Um, so that one's actually pretty good for that. Yeah, but it does have a couple of features that make it look almost cervical though. See, it's still got the vestiges here of a, of a couple of unsinate processes. So it's looking a little bit cervical, but those, that facet and then demi-facet give the game away. So that is T1. All right, now we'll try, thank you, we'll try for these next three. So what we've got here are the last three, the bottom three thoracic vertebrae, T10, 11, and 12. And what we've got with them, sorry, what we've got with them is, um, starting to look a bit different. So starting to look a bit like lumbar vertebrae, we can see that T10 has an inferiorly sloping spinous process, but it's not as long and as sharp as the typical ones. T11 and 12 though, are really starting to look more like lumbar spinous process. What we do have uh, that helps us though, is there should be just one complete facet here, 
and then no demi facet down this end, which is what we get. And again on T11, one complete facet here, but no demi facet on the inferior part. And on T12, one quite large and, and more inferior facet here, and it's pretty much on the pedicle now. It's kind of moved from the body onto the pedicle. Now on T10, and this one, we're lucky, this one's beautifully clear. T10, on the transverse process, there's a facet there for the 10th rib. That should be there. That's pretty much always there. On T11 and T12, notice that the transverse processes are really quite small and no facet. So if you look at the transverse processes there, you can see they're quite sh short and stubby. Uh, you know, T10 is not that much bigger, but it is a bit bigger. So T11 and 12, short transverse processes, no tubicle. T10, tubicle, slightly bigger transverse process. So if you're only looking at one of these, if you can see the, the facet here on the transverse process, it's T10. Okay, so that one is solved. If you can see that transverse process, there's only one facet here, but there's one on the transverse process, it's T10. If, however, you're looking at one of these ones, T11 or 12, and you can see there's only one facet here, but there's nothing on the transverse process, then you know it's either T11 or T12. But how to tell them apart is the articular facets. So, notice that here we've got an articular facet on the superior articular process. Here we've got an articular facet on the inferior articular process. Notice that they're facing anterior and posterior, pretty much. So this one is facing posteriorly, the superior one. The inferior one is facing anteriorly. That's that's typical of, of thoracic vertebrae, that's how they go. So that one has to be T11. T12 has a superior, sorry, posterior facing superior articular facet, but if you look at the inferior one, we can actually see it here from a lateral point of view. So it's, it's not just facing directly anteriorly, it's facing laterally as well. Now this one's not as pronounced as some of them are. Some of them come even further around on the lateral aspect, but that should tell you this is T12, okay? If this facet is facing posteriorly, but this one is, is lateral, or at least part of it is lateral, part of it will be anterior here, but if it curves around to be facing laterally as well, that's T12, okay? So on these two vertebrae, T11 and T12, you can see the difference, hopefully, because we can't see any of this facet from a lateral point of view, but we can see some of this one. Does that make sense? So that's how you tell T11 and T12. They're pretty, not, they're not identical apart from that, but if you're only looking at one of them, that's the way to tell, okay? It's the orientation of the articular facets.